the Writers League of Texas. Hi, Carlotta. Um, hi, Carlotta. How are you? <laughs> but I'm actually here tonight. I have such an it's such an honor to be able to introduce both of these people who I know really well and who I consider not just amazing members of our board of directors and who give selflessly pretty much every day to the Writers League of Texas, but two people that I consider my friends. So I'm going to introduce them um, fairly briefly for me, um, and then they're going to get started. So the first thing I want to say before I read Tony Burnett's bio is that I think of Tony Burnett as a renaissance man. This guy seems to be able to do pretty much anything. Um, but also works as an artist across so many different mediums. And I think everybody here, a lot of people here go to CD tonight with his music. He's a poet, he writes short stories, um, he does more than that, more than those few things, I'm sure. Um, but he's also got what I think the great poets have, which is a huge, huge heart. And he's always giving to the people in his life and to the people around him. And he's just, to me, been someone who has made my life better for knowing him. Um, so I'm so excited to be here tonight. And for you guys, for those of you who don't know, it's great to look at this crowd because I know there are a lot of people in this crowd who know who know both of these folks. And then I imagine some of you are about to be introduced to Tony and his wonderful work and then also Carlotta. So Tony Burnett is an award-winning poet, journalist, activist, and songwriter. His poetry and short fiction have been published in Sixfold, Connotation Press, Short Story America, Frontier Tales, Texas Poetry Calendar, Poetry of Round, Rob, and Round Top Anthology, and others. He is Editor-in-Chief of Scribe, the online blog of the Writers League of Texas, and also serves as the board president. He makes his home in rural central Texas with his wife, Robin, who is here tonight. Um, there's Robin. And his hobbies include poking wasps' nests with short sticks, <laughs> <laughs> which is good to know because I actually have some wasp nests at my house and I didn't know that was something I could call you for, and wandering aimlessly about. So let's give a hand. I'm going to introduce both of them and then they're going to come up here, but a hand for Tony Burnett. Um, what can I say about Carlotta? Except that when I moved to Austin three years ago, she had she had met me once for an hour for coffee, and she invited me to move into her home until I found a home to live in here. And she introduced me to her family, and she became one of my closest friends. But also, because I was so new to Austin, Carlotta was one of the first people who really introduced me to the city. And if you talk to Carlotta about Austin, you hear such love in her voice when she talks about this city, but if you look at her photographs, um, you see that she's a real artist and that she sees Austin the way that we all want to see Austin. But beyond that, she is a really wonderful poet. And if you haven't looked at her her blog, which is, um, the name is escaping well me, <laughs> Well Versed Mom, then you're missing out because she writes some of the most charming and wonderful pieces there. And then obviously she um, has quite a gift with the haiku. So this is someone that if you haven't met her yet, you are gonna be so excited to be introduced to this book tonight. And I'm gonna read her bio really quickly. Carlotta is an Austin-based writer and poet. She performed in Austin's Listen to Your Mother show in 2012 and recently read her piece, The Salon, at Austin's One Page Salon. She's on the board of directors of the Writers League of Texas. A single mom of two teenage daughters, she funds their activities by working, uh, well, wait, I'm reading your old bio, I think. <laughs> Don't worry about how she funds their activities. She does it, she makes it happen. Um, Haiku Austin is her first book um, and features both her poetry and photography. Um, and I would also mention that Carlotta won the pun off at the um, O. Henry pun off a few years ago. So she's really knows what she's doing. So please welcome Carlotta Eichstein Kevin. tag team. So just a little bit about the book. Uh, it's 24 years in the making. I moved here to Austin in 1992 from Washington, D.C. and it's like one of the best things I ever did. Um, and you can see the product of that in the book. Um, I, 
one of my daughters, Ella, is here tonight, and she and her older sister, Kate, um, <laughs> have been um, very um, tolerant, for the most part, of my taking pictures, which is half of the, um, half of the part of this book. Um, I have been known to stop along roadsides, and um, I, I take a lot of pictures with my iPhone, and I also have several cameras that I use, but, um, but they've been very tolerant and um, have kind of inspired me also to see Austin through, through youthful eyes, I think. Even, even though I've been here 24 years, I'm constantly seeing it new through, through their eyes. Um, the, so that, that's the one half of this book, is the, is the pictures and the photography. The other half is the writing, and I've, um, I've always been a writer. I knew um, from my very beginning. Well, first, I, when I first was a little kid, I wanted to be an astronaut, but I um, <laughs> found out you had to have 20-20 vision, and I've had glasses since I was in second grade, so that kind of blew that dream. So my second choice was to be a writer, and, um, and so I've always loved that, and I was writing poems at the you know, age of seven and eight. And um, I have come to this format, to haiku, I think a big portion of that came from my, um, my work in advertising, which teaches you to kind of be very short and concise and have a catchy headline and, and punchline. And you'll find that the, the haiku in the book, they're not, um, they break a little bit of the rules of the traditional Japanese form. Um, you're supposed to not have metaphor or simile in there. You're supposed to have a nature um, word or idea or concept in there. And um, so these don't exactly follow that. They're, they're, they're kind of the Americanized version of that. But they do follow the format of 17 syllables in the 575 format. And there's also um, the idea, which is in the, in the Japanese haiku of the juxtaposition of ideas or some sort of concept that, um, that kind of play off one another. And so I've, um, I've done that in here as well. And um, so without further ado, I'll just read a couple and then I'll turn the podium over to Tony and then we'll come back and go back and forth. So um, this first one is um, for the Moonlight Tower. And also someone told me that you're supposed to read haiku twice. And I'm not sure I wasn't able to confirm that before tonight's reading, so I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Um, moonlight Towers. Halos in the sky, blessing Austin with their glow, tempting teens to climb. Halos in the sky, blessing Austin with their glow, tempting teens to climb. This next one is um, for the beloved Alamo Draft House, which we all know and love. And this is called PSA. Quiet while watching, or else you'll get taken out, Tarantino style. <laughs> I'm not, not going to read them twice, I'll just do one. Um, one of the first things that I did um, when I came here was go to see the bats, the Congress Avenue bats, which are really awesome. And um, so this is called Patience. Anticipation. Congress Ave watchers and bats just hanging around. <laughs> um, one of my favorite things to do, I'm a swimmer and I, I love Barton Springs and it took me a while before I would actually swim laps in, in Barton Springs but um, I used to just go and float on a float and then roll over into the water when it got too hot and then you climb back up on the float but um, in recent years I've started swimming laps there and I just love it. and. Um, this one is called Nippy. <laughs> Topless sunbather, exits Barton Springs. It's clear, the water is cold. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, one of my favorite things to do um, is go to ACL Fest. I go every year, I go all three days. And I usually go by myself because I don't want to be slowed down by waiting for anybody to go to the band that they want to see. It's all about me. I want to go see what I want to see. And so I go and I have my camera and my backpack and, um, and I just love it. So um, there's a couple of haiku in here about um, ACL Fest. Crowds stream through Zilker. The air thickens with music, among other things. <laughs>
show of hands, who, who's driven over 130 miles per hour? <laughs> when I wrote this book, I had that same feeling. It's exhilarating. But in the back of your mind, there's this little voice that says, if you screw up, you will die. <laughs> <laughs> So, this book takes a kind of a circular path. Starts out real sweet and loving, and then it gets a little gritty in the middle, and then I bring it back to sweet and loving. And no, I'm not going to read the whole book. I'm trying to stay to the general principle of that. I'm trying to decide if I can see better with my glasses or not. I'm going with that, I think. This first poem I wrote. Uh, in a hotel room in the Waxahachie while I was hanging out. My lovely trophy wife back there was at a conference, and I said, if I go with her and I hang out in the hotel room all day, I can just write and write and write and write and write, and nothing will bother me. Well, that would be exactly true, but I found some really good restaurants there. But I did write this one poem. It's part of a three-poem series. I'm not going to read all three of them, but it's it's called Love Note on Paper 1, 2, and 3, and I'm going to read 2. It's called Training. I have become intoxicated from sharing your breath. As if bitten, your lips recoil from mine. Your eyelids flip open like cartoon window shades. The constellations in your eyes shift a dimension. Are you okay, I ask? Why are you being so weird? Your eyes were open. Yes, I admit, so. You're supposed to close your eyes when kissing, you insist. But how would I see the dawn of your lashes against your cheeks? Or your elegant fingertips break the promise of my skin? Let's try this again, you say. Keep your eyes closed. We have to get this right. <laughs> This is a, uh, okay, we're already veering off into the weird. Uh, <laughs> this is supposed to be shouted, but I don't think my voice is. It's called As Seen on TV. Rectangular God, spinning sensitive scenes into palatable porridge, liquid crystals, multiply pixels, plastered against the wall. 1080 by 720 equals higher math. Sleep stealing methadrine colors shutting down synapses with mainline accuracy. Flatline, flat screen, slack jaw. Codeine eyes annihilate irises in the dark. All ages welcome, available in three dimensions. No ID required. <laughs> I'm gonna do one more and then I'm gonna put mine longer. This, uh, there are several poems in here about the desert. I love the desert, and, uh, but the desert can be brutal. And the desert can specifically be brutal to people that are escaping terrorism and land south of here and trying to get into this country. Uh, it's not an easy task. It's called this new land. A blister on the red bandana skin darkened by the smoke of diesel, the grime of yesterday, and the dozens before, unredeemable history. Her young body ages in declining circumspect, circle tightening around the eyelids, also blistered, voided countenance of youth. The first time she sees bones in the desert, realizing a human femur, skeletal anatomy lesson taught by attached shoes. Too big, but now hers. A sweet blessing on the horizon of windmill. Wait for the cover of starlight and prayer. Now alone in spirit, Dolores del Padre, El Corazon de Madre, for, forge forth, fall into the liquid ecstasy of trough. Water cradles her life through osmosis. Curtain by night, be quick. Follow the trail of discard, clothes, bodies, futures. To prevail is to not go back. No home, familiar. To find a way out or to fail and fall and fill the stomach of the car car. To be a part of this new land.
I would be remiss if I, um, I meant to do this at the beginning, but um, this is probably the closest I'll ever get to an Oscar uh, speech. And um, <laughs> I know that they, there's only those times when people forget to thank their um, their partner or their spouse or whatever. And so um, I don't have a spouse, but I do have my, um, my book designer, my best friend, my um, partner from advertising, and um, I wanted to thank Ann Stevenson. And <laughs> she's, uh, this book is as much hers as it is mine, and I couldn't have done it without her, and I, I'm just over the moon, and it's because of her, and I'm really thankful for you. Um, so just a couple more. Um, one of my favorite things to do is have kids, and I think um, even if you don't have kids, it's fun to go to the Zilker Kite Festival. Let's go fly a kite. Windy weekend at Zilker. Trees stretch to snag one. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, um, UT is on everybody's minds uh, this time of year with the graduation. And so um, even though I didn't go to UT, um, I know a lot about it from living <laughs> close to it and knowing lots of people who went there. Um, so I just had a couple for that. This is UT football. Fall comes to Austin. Everything but the trees turns to burnt orange. <laughs> <laughs> and um, here's one called sign language. <laughs> Five-fingered salute means hook em horns or loser if you're an Aggie. <laughs> and another one called workload. So much to study, pulling all-nighter to plan, ACL Fest picks. <laughs> um, I, I was born in Michigan and I lived there until I was about 10 years old and we had um, two lilac bushes outside our house. One was white and one was purple and um, when I moved to, to Austin, I, um, I, you know, you can't grow lilacs here, and, but we do have the great hyacinth or the mountain willow and I love, I have a big one in my front yard now that um, just recently has really gone gangbusters over the last like two years in, in blooming, and I just love it. And the picture in here is from this year, from from that um, from that tree. Um, this is called Mountain Wall. Heavy with purple, dizzying grape Kool-Aid buzz. Spring leaves us punch drunk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I am a big. Um, old style country music fan, and I've learned to two-step. I learned at Dallas Nightclub, which is sadly no longer here. There's a haiku about it in the book. But um, I love to see Dale Watson, and um, love going to the Broken Spoke. And so these are um, two poems about those two subjects. Broken Spoke. Locals scoot their boots across wood, two-stepping past, tourists, two left feet. <laughs> Dale Watson, drawlin' truck dive, drawlin' truck driving, troubadour sings of a love as deep as his voice. If you've heard Dale Watson, you know he's got that very deep growl of a voice. And then um, just a little more modern music. Gary Clark Jr. is a, a local guy who's really done well. Um, this is a haiku about him called Homeboy. When you've done so well, singing the blues, it might get hard to sing the blues. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, Austin's famous for its food, and um, I'm sure we all have our, our favorites. Um, the breakfast tacos, of course, are um, everybody knows about them um, now. This one is called Salvation. Breakfast miracle, virtue wrapped in flour or corn, Hangovers vanish. <laughs> and another one called Queso. Um, one of the uh, one of the accounts I worked on uh, early in my advertising career here was on the border, 
And uh, we'd have to go do focus groups in different cities. And part of, sometimes um, part of the focus group would give, people would have to read descriptions of food items on menus. And in different cities all across the country, people weren't familiar with the word queso. And so they'd, they'd say queso or queso. And um, it was always kind of uh, interesting thing to, to hear the different pronunciations. But uh, this is called queso. Pool of gooey gold, naked chips in hand, we pause. Who will take the first dip? <laughs>
retro thing for real or ironically? <laughs> um, and mentioned that, uh, that I competed in the O. Henry Putoff World Championship. I competed several years um, until I finally nailed it. And um, this is about the O. Henry Punoff World Championship. Pun slingers gather, and just for a wordy cause, they serve homegrown jokes. And it's grown with a G R O A N. This one is called the Evening Lineup. The pedicabbers ride and wait and ride and wait an endless cycle. <laughs> uh, this is called Hipster Kids. Mini skinny jeans, kale juice in their sippy cups, cooler hats than yours. <laughs> Maybe not yours though, that's a lot. <laughs> and then um, finally in the back there's a, there's a section called Lost Austin. Um, that kind of pays tribute to the places that, that were, you know, that we knew and loved but are no longer with us. And um, like Dallas Nightclub, where I told you I learned how to two-step. Ladies' night at last, parking lot, packed with pickups, plenty more inside. <laughs> <laughs> and then finally, Austin passed. Once upon a time, it filled the streets of Austin. We miss free parking. <laughs>
Uh, I don't know how many of you raise chickens, but one of, one of the things about chickens, if, if you don't have a rooster and you have a lot of chickens, one of the hens will transgender themselves into a rooster and try to crow and they'll quit laying and they will be the flock's rooster. And so that, there's the mention of that just in here, so I just mentioned that so you didn't think I was <laughs> Before 7 a.m., one hen attempts to crow, perched on the wagon's tongue, relinquishing herself, a surrogate for vacant masculinity. Spent hens, my climbers, follow me for melon rinds and snow peas. In pretense, I capture them, a daily game. Everything, everyone here, escapes, but no one wanders far. Drool-faced dogs flip-flop on the cool earth of charred, the cool cobbles of charred earth. Porch dogs in the afternoon, now they frolic, wrestle in posture. They run the lane and pastures, then wander home. In ancient feline languages on the windowsill, sparring with the moss rose. He pauses to watch me place his dish, then performs the stretch that sends me back to bed. <laughs> I said we just bring it back to the, the love part. This is a called romance novel. That's all I'm going to tell you. She craved the silent majesty of the falcon, soaring over the beauty of desert vistas, picking meals from sparse mammalian ghosts. Pocatillo and prickly pear dared her, a palette of daggers painting the sunset in blood. He nestled his soul in the dark beauty of thicket, where eyes adjust to minimalist shadows, dancing around Cypress' knees his secret lair of penitent beauty, reptilian dangers lurking under decomposition and tea-stained palm. They built a life in concrete clay compromise, where the only beauty is mathematical symmetry of tilled fields, and the dangers are scientific biological and posted at the perimeter. They loved hard, they loved soft, and paradise cocooned around them. Mm -hmm. If you didn't get a music CD, I'm giving them free just for showing up out here as long as they last. There's some in a box over here in the end of the table if you like. Uh, kind of raunchy, rocky folk music, and there's so much <laughs> you guys it's the best way to support not just these two great writers but this bookstore which brings a lot of great people in constantly for events and one last round of applause for our team <laughs>